Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Kony Pilot. In the addition to video, we're going to be discussing and doing the movie regression data science project. I want to be going deeper into the world of exploratory data analysis, which is a very important stage in the machine learning pipeline. I'm going to be going over concepts such as data observation, motivate analysis, integrate analysis, atlas detection, and not only that, we're going to be doing a lot of data visualization in this area. Okay, guys, before going forward, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Be the first to be notified when I'm opening data science and machine learning videos. Okay, guys, without further ado, let's head to business. Okay, so what's the goal of this our data science project? The goal of this data science project is to use features such as your producer rating, time taken to make the movie, or budget of the movie, which is the amount spent to create the movie to make prediction on the act common revenue which the movie is going to generate okay so that's what be the goal of this our data science project okay so the first step i want to go over i want to be importing our required models mount down protein wired um, okay let's say mark down so what I'd like to be able to be using, we're going to be using first of all our faithful pandas with our data with our data set as PD. So we're going to import import numpy on America in library NP. Then also for the visualization aspect, as I said before, we're going to be doing a lot of data visualization in this our project. We're going to import in at five dots. And PLC or this okay. Then also we're going to import C bone. But C bone session. Okay, let me run this now. Okay. The next step now we're going to be doing our um, data observation. Okay. This data observation is going to be checking the general overview of our data set. Okay. We'll be checking if our data set have one. Uh, Maybe missing values, number of number of local data in our data set for this um data okay data of the shun. Let me run this now. Okay, so now first of all to get our data set, I'm going to place a link in the description below, which is going to take you to my GitHub account where you can easily download the data set there. You're going to see the, the data set and the notebook. All you just have to do is to extract it. When you extract it, you're given to file, which is a notebook for this data science project, and also the data in CSV format. Okay, so I'm going to put studies in my EF data frame pd dot read CSV. Copy multi yeah shine okay CSV. Yes, let me run this. Then let me check for the head of our data frame. This is all what data observation is all about. We're just going to be checking for the early uh, info. Okay, here you can see here these are the features which we have marketing expense, production expense, multiplex coverage, the budget, which is the money spent in producing uh, the movie, movie length, uh, let me say in minutes. Okay, the lead actor rating, lead actress rating. Director rating, the producer rating, critics rating, the trailer views, all the um, these features contain if the movie have 3D effects or not, are 3D available, time taken to make movie, Twitter hashtag, the gen, if it's drama, comedy, or trailer, the average uh, age of the actors, yeah, the non complex and Finally, our target variable, which is the collection, the total revenue that is generated by the movie. Okay, so this is what we're going to make predictions on. We're going to make prediction on this of our collection, only creating the collection which our movie generated. Okay, so let's check for the info of our data set called tf.info. Let me check this to see if we have any missing um, data set in each of our column. When you see here now, you can see here most of our column here are, are flute, integer data type. So 
So you can see here, almost all of them here, except for this utility available, which is either yes or no, it's categorical. And also my gen here, which, um, <coughs> which is um, the gen of the movie, if it's uh, maybe drama, um, comedy, trailer. Also, you can also see here that this is my time taking have some missing uh, data set. Let's see, our, well, our standard um, number of coins is supposed to be 500 at 6, and here you can see it's just contained 494. So it's having some missing data set. So I want to be handling this data while you're giving a general overview of our data set. So, next step we are going to go in over, we're going to go in over um, univariate analysis. Okay. Analysis. Univert analysis. So what is univert analysis? It's simply analysis of each individual column. In this univert analysis, the um, relationship between variables and considered, you just check for so for concepts such as the distribution of your data set, if it's normally distributed or skewed. Also check if um you are having any issues with each of your features. Okay. So that's all what this univert analysis is going to be covering. So to do that, we're going to be plotting a histogram of all our features here, of each of our features here. No relationship is considered. So you're just going to plot a histogram of each of our features here, okay? And do that, I'm going to score pf.east. Okay, pf.east. Okay, pf.east. Okay, pf.east. Follow up, triple. Yeah, S, big bear size, set it to eight. I'll size of the 32. My label size is also going to be eight. Then set line width. One then I agree with so I want to send a grid to the first. I want to see grid on my dots. So I'm also going to give it a tight layout. Tight layouts. Tight tight layout. Then set my work to be. Zero, zero, one and two, then one and two. Okay. Then I'm going to give you my plot a sub two subtitle. Then placing that um uh, okay. Placing that um position uh, zero point six five in the x axis and my y axis. I want to place it at one point two five. Okay, let me show my plot. It's still bound and just what is it giving giving me? Okay, the one again. Okay, okay. Here you can see my uh histogram of each of our features in this my the uh, movie regression data set. I see my marketing expense, production expense, multiplex coverage, and other features. I see here my marketing expense here on seems as if it's having um, some art trials which we should be able to be observing later. Um, my production expense, multiplex coverage, and my budget here. My budget here is having um, a normal kind of a normal distribution. Or uh, my movie length having a wide skewed. Yes, why skill data set? My um lead actor rating, lead actress rating, director rating, producer rating on um, where if you come and understand about all this my rating here, you will, you will notice that all of them here are kind of wise with having the same shape of data set. Later we're going to be doing more data observation on, on these our ratings to check if maybe they are they are, they are the same. So also my critic rating, my trailer views, time taking, my Twitter hashtag, and definitely this will have 
we 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 have some atlas as you can see here we have most of the data sets at for values in um the value of zero where most where few of them are in thousands you can see here some of them are in two thousand one thousand so definitely they're going to be atlas in this my twitter hashtag also my average age of actors my norm multi-complex and finally my target variable which is my collection so that I've been used of this my weight analysis it helps us to get a general overview of how each of our column in our data set looks like okay so what we're going to be doing now what we're going to the uh, over to the multivariate analysis multivariate analysis multi a analysis okay so what is multivariate analysis this multivariate analysis should be considered the relationship between each of these my features here it the main aim of our, our multivariate analysis is to check on how each of these features affect one another okay particularly this my collection which is my target on um, column which i are going to be predicting on Okay, that's the main use of this my multivariate analysis. In multivariate analysis, the relationship are considered. To use our multivariate analysis, we are going to be using a correlation pit map. In that, I'm going to, I'm going to create a, a correlation table. I'll call df dot core. Get the correlations of my uh, columns. We want this now. Then I call my correlation. Where you can see my correlation this for what we're going to be plotting in our heat map okay how each of the column affects one another so let me just quickly plot the heat map now okay okay your team does the draw so the fixed size the size should be 12 and okay then we'll go as a nice job okay map okay or well, the sets are not to be true then my fmc want to have it in a small place it's almost to f then follow map of sewing Program map should be equal to the line. Then I will check this up on the screen. Okay. So I'm going to give me the title. I'm going to set one size to be 10. Let me show my plot now. Okay. Here you can see my correlation heat map has been plotted. Okay. From here we can check the relationship um, between our each of our features in our data set. We can check how the features affect our target variable, which is my collection. Okay. So you, yeah, you can see here that my, my collection, the main variable affecting it, having a correlation, possible correlation with it, is this my budget here. You can see here it's my budget. Have a correlation of um, so zero point seven, meaning that the higher the budget, which is the total amount spent on creating the movie, the higher the higher the revenue that will be generated by the movie. Yeah, and also this is my trailer view here. See here, the higher the trailer views, and also the higher the revenue generated by the movie. So these are two main features that have high positive correlation with my collection of revenue generated by the movie. Okay, so so here we are seeing that the um, features having high correlation with my collection of revenue generated is my budget and my trailer view. So let's dig deeper into this um, budget and trailer view. Let's see how they affect this my collection, okay, with lots of visualization. Okay, to do that, I'm going to be plotting a scatter plot of these two features. 
Ethereum and dependence variable. My dependent variable, yes. My collection. My A dependent, which is mine. Okay. Okay. Ready dot X leave Let me show mine. But now, so here you can also see a beautiful linear relationship with this my um chiller view. You can see the linear relationship here and collection. The my chiller view can see a beautiful linear relationship. So we are done visualizing the relationship of our highly correlated numerical variables. So let's now visualize for our categorical columns. Okay, let me come in here with this. Check my for my the biblical column which are my old debt. Okay, what's that day? We have um the two the available and for the gem if it's coming your drama. So let me visualize how these features, if the team the available is present or not, how this feature affects the collection or when generated by the movie. Okay, to do this, I'm going to be using a boss plot called. Of oh, my S will be daily available. Available. Oh, my Y will be production. It's a uh, which is the earth, their mind. Let's um, shipping follow blind. So let me close this now. Here you can see my boss plot. Okay, you can see my boss plot relates to my collection and my three D available if it's present or not. And here from our influence, we can see here that features having um a movie having three D available that have three D animation present tends to Generate more revenue. Sliding this um uh, atlas here, you can see a movie that have two D animation present tend to have more collections. Yeah, it's generating more revenue. Okay, so let's also plot for this um my gen. Do that. Let me just copy this code here. Won't keep typing same code one over again. Let me just copy it and paste this stuff here. Then let me just change my X. As this is to be okay. okay, let me run this now. So here you can see our boss plot for all the categories in our gen from the trailer to the drama to the comedy and to the action. We're going to be ignore we're going to be ignoring all these um supposed atlas in this um uh, our gen uh, column. Here you can see it from our influence. We can see here that uh, the trailers have are tend to be more expensive, tend to, uh, tend to generate more revenue than my um, comedy and also my action movies. Okay, so I'll be able to um, visualize the relationship between um, our collections and our uh, highly correlated numeric variables, and also the relationship between my collection and our categorical variables. So the next step in this our Data analysis is filling of missing column. Okay, cover this to the map down. Filling missing columns. Okay, so let me check my info. Okay, I'm checked for missing columns. Okay, I've already seen this before. We already have one missing column in our. Data set, which is this my time taking. Okay, so to fill this our missing column, I've decided to fill it with the main. Okay, you can start to fill it with the with the um with the mode, which is the most frequent. For the media, which is the middle value, I've set to fill it with the main, which I think the main is more appropriate. 
Okay. To do this, I would be using the data frame fill now function. You have the time taken record to df dot time new now. Okay. Ef dot time taking dot mean. Okay. We want this now. Yeah, let me check for mine. Let me put my TF info again. Let me check if there are some missing um, column. And from um, what we see here, there's no longer any missing column in our data set anymore. So let me draw our attention back to this. I want to do our multivariate analysis, our C bone heat map. Let me go back okay, here. You can see here when you order something here, you see here that my lead actor within, I let address within, director within. And production within all seems to be having same correlation with all seems to be having same correlation with our collection column, which is our target column. You can see all of them virtually have a, co a negative correlation of minus 0 0.25, 0 0.25, minus 0. and minus 0 0.25. So, what I would advise we do here, we're going to be deleting uh, all this column and give finding an average rating for all these are features okay to do that i'm just going to come here and go back to where i went for i want to i'm going to get in a current code and df average rating rating report to a summation of all these my rating here and red Ah, so we was going to okay. I led actor oh, 10 plus my words led up to us with 10 and my go user with 10 and what down here my word um director with yes okay Thank you. Vector it okay. So yeah, I'm going to divide them by what four. It's the mean. Let me want this now. What is going on? Write syntax. Okay. I forgot to place notation sign on this now. Okay. So here we have already created. A new uh, column called DF rating. Now I'm going to just delete the rest of my written column. Okay, what is it? DF or done lead actor written. Okay, let me just copy all this. On my director everything okay let me just delete all these within columns let me delete them now okay they are deleted let me check my dear but info again check you that actually deleted yeah you can see my number of columns have been reduced from 17 something 18 to 14. okay here yeah, you can see my average using here with all my other returns gone okay okay the next stage of our Data analysis and our machine learning pipeline is what handling of categorical data. Okay, let me give you then handling categorical data. Okay, to handle our categorical data, we're going to use the one hot encoding method. Okay, one of the encoding methods is a very good method of handling categorical data. We are a situation where the uh, category is present and going to be presented by one and a situation where it is not present and going to be present as zero that's what we call it one host encoding method okay to do this i'm going to check for let's just continue since, since we already know that our our categorical data in our column is already uh, already on um, the gen and the what's the other one again the gen and the three the available let's just hit straight to um 
want a coordinator to this one the coordinator we're going to be using the pf dot what by the way get our data from what do pd dot get dummies dummies method then we're going to place our data frame here then the columns it's going to be my what uh, gen colon and my what Okay, so let me call my TF now. Let me check the edge. Let me go this here. You can see here my data frame has been more columns will be added to my data frame. You can see here my gen action movie, gen comedy, drama, trailer, and also 3D available if it's yes or no. Here it is, yes, and here it is, no. But if you notice something here, my 3D can, can only either be present or not present. So actually, there won't be any need of this, my 3D available, no. Because I mean, my 3D available, yes, already give me a full description of my data set. Because here, the one here present, um, is present. The zero here represent is absent. The zero here also represent is absent. The one here is present. Is present. And it's all here present it what absent. So I won't be need uh, there will not be need for this my TLD available now. So I'm going to be deleting it. I'm going to call my TL I've already deleted it now. So the next stage in our exposure data analysis is handling of atlas. Okay, let me give my heading. And then out right. okay and then what last okay actually on what last are simply data set of values that only for normal distribution of our data okay so what i'm going to do now i'm going to copy the um the histogram which we plotted for our uh unit rate analysis and we just copy it so we don't have to retype all this code again Although it's not advisable, you copy code as a programmer, but I'm going to copy this one because I don't have strength now to start typing those lots of code. Let me just come here and then paste it here. Okay, let me do it now. Okay. Okay. Okay, here you can see um from our observation here, you can see here marketing expense, um, um marketing expense. So this is our at last. Let me just let me check. So this is I'm going to be using my Scatter plot. I'm going to go PLT dot scatter for the distribution of the points. My EF dot okay collection, which is my target variable, and my what DF and um, start again marketing expense. Okay, my getting apps. Okay, let me run this now. So here we can see our distribution of our data sets. And see here well, it did actually an outlier because here you can see how the data are distributed. They are kind of together. Let's start. It isn't really an outlier. So let me check for the next uh, column, which is my production expense. Obviously, from what I'm seeing here. There's no outlier my production expense and multiple coverage covered, but just no outlier. I mean, it's a normal distribution and movie length. We take within pillars time taking. Okay, this time taking the high possibility of there being an outlier because here you can see most of the values, uh, most of the distribution of values are in hundreds and two hundred. Why there are some here that are in zero. So let me just check for my on. Uh, Time taking. Time taking. Okay, I may run this again. Oh yes, our inference was correct. There are outliers here. You can see here the distribution of our data is clustered around uh, my hundreds, hundred to two hundred. that are clustered around here. While the rest are in, while some of them, which are these two points here, are in zeros. So I want to be handling this uh, outlier. Let me just check for others. Just handle all of them at once. 
and Twitter um, hashtags. Let me also check for that. But there's also a possibility of there being there also for Twitter. And should I have okay, let me one this okay. Oh, truly, there are yeah, clients here, yeah. because you can see here the, the most of the data points are around my 250 mark. Why these two odd points here are in uh, once 1600 and what 2000? Okay, so we have two column which uh are class in it, which are my now uh, time. Taking column on my Twitter hashtags. Okay, let me say for my average actor, average age of actors. Let me also check for that also. Average, check for average age actors. You only want this. Okay, yeah, you can see. Okay, it seems to be at last at this point. You can see just one point here. Okay. So we have about so we have three um columns now in which is at last. Okay. Then yeah, also let me check for my okay. non multi complex is clear, collection is clear, average waiting, which that column created earlier is clear. Again, action, you know, these aren't going to be at last because we did one of encoding um method on it. So the data set are going to be distributed in zero and one. So there's no actor in this my gen action, comedy, drama, um, trailer, and also my 3D yes. Okay. So what we're going to be doing next now. Let's write our observation. Okay. What if you mark that? Observation. Out bias in. Okay, so to handle this after I said before, I want to be using the same time method. I'm just going to create a, a function for it. I'll call this in center add bias. You know, they are setting just two parameters, which are my, my data frame and the column, which I'm going to be uh, getting atlas on. Then the simple algorithm, which is the atlas, simply follow is that. Any value greater than my 99 percent of my distribution of data multiplied by a specific factor, which I'm going to define, is considered to be an upper outlier. And also, any value greater than my, than my best percent, my one percent, multiplied by a specific factor, is considered to be a lower outlier. So, we we'll define our lower limit. Yeah, our lower limit should be my NP. Okay, Jim. My GF call. What the 99 percent time? As a general law of rule of thumb, we're going to be using factor theory for our observe. Oh, Am I doing this? Is supposed to be okay. Theory. This is supposed to be for my upper limit in my lower limit. Upper limit. Okay. Then for my lower limit, limit is going to be np dot percent of and yes, data frame column. So my first percent time multiplied by zero point two. Okay. Then I want our function to return if formatted string and got this upper limit. Okay, limits. And the lower limit, okay. The one is now. Then let me use our function we just created to detect outliers in 
our column which we already influenced from our plot which we created from our histogram and our scatter plot that there is out there. So my first will be for my time taking we'll call P out bias data frame and my colon is going to be time taking and may one this and what's going on in volume it's not defined volume okay that over here we want this then it's again okay here you can see my upper limit is supposed to be 57 or my lower limit is also supposed to be 32 okay any value greater that is my upper limit is an outlier and also value greater than my lower limit is lower than my lower limit is my also an outlier okay so to do that i'm going to say df dot time taken okay the df dot time are taking those that are greater than um six three seven okay one two okay or values same time taken that's a less than it is okay so then i want this now what's going on what's going on at our chip time okay it's supposed to be a capital letter that's again oh here you can see we have just two value at my lower point which are the two zeros so i'm actually going to convert it to the mean of my um hold on, my time taking coin i'm going to say pf dot time taking of me again okay. i may want this now. so my data has been modified if i have to copy this now and i place this here and i want this here you can see here we don't have any atlas in our um column animal okay so let me go over to my next um column which is my twitter hashtag i'm going to sweep on my um not sure i created p outliers my data frame yeah my column name is twitter hashtags <coughs> okay and i want this now yeah you can see my upper limit is 923.9 uh, and my lower limit is <coughs> 60.5 okay so to do this i'm also going to go to the same step by go to earlier in modifying the, the outliers so let me just paste the code which i copied earlier and let me change the um uh, okay on to twitter hashtag again Times. then the value is going to be 99 okay 9 to 2 ah, okay 0.9 then my lower limit is what 60.5 then change is my time picking to twitter twitter as that okay let me run this now Yes. So here you can see yeah we have just two at last now in this two um in this four jump in two okay the upper at last so I'm going to also modify it I'm gonna say um it should be equal to df dot twitter twitter hashtag dot main okay I'm gonna fill it them with the main with the main it has set let me my one is okay here yeah. it has been filled with me okay okay let's go back to the last one which is the average age of actors to do that most we call my as you drama p at s okay so guys this is the advantage of writing a function you don't have to keep writing the same code over and over again just write a function for it and it's going to be used anytime you want to call it if someone said on my average age of my actors 
me run this now. Here yeah, you can see my upper limit is 180 and my lower limit is 6. So I'm, I'm just, just going to quickly modify it. I'm going to say and column df on When I want this now, you can see we have just one value, which is doing, and now I'm going to convert it to the main of my showing F G H up close. We okay, I'm going to convert to the main of my column of average age of actors. When I want this now, I've modified. And let's see our data frame down. Our pre process data frame. Okay, here we can see our data frame has been pre processed. Okay, wow. This is really a long journey we have been going through. Okay, we have gone through a lot of steps. Okay, so the next video, guys, I'm going to be creating a machine learning model for our moving regression data set. But in the next video, we're going to be going over different regression algorithms such as your yearly regression your regularization method and not that we're going to be diving into the world of deep learning we are going to be using our artificial neural network a simple artificial neural network for this our regression data set don't forget to check out the next video thanks for watching my video if you are not subscribed to my channel you don't forget to subscribe because i'll be releasing new videos on a regular basis okay guys thanks for watching